Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. I'm Rick, and today's video is basically gonna be explaining AMD's product stack. And by the end of the video, hopefully, if you're a first time builder, you'll have a good idea of which motherboard and CPU combo should be best for what you're looking for. Now, just before any comments down below, the point of this video is not to go into every fine, every exact detail of what the differences are between the different chipsets and the different CPUs. It's really an idea of an overview so that someone who's a first time builder can get an idea of how to read AMD's product stack and at the same time get a general idea of which CPUs or which motherboards they should be focusing on for a first time builder. So if any of you out there want to add any information in the comments down below, it'll be welcome. But like I said, the, the idea of the video is not to go into perfect detail, but really as a general overview. So let's, so, get started. let's start with, start with motherboards with AMD are basically divided into three general uh, chipsets. You have the entry level A320 chipset. You have the mid-level B350 or B450 chipset because there are two generations now out for that chipset, but ultimately the functions are very similar between the two generations. And lastly, there are X370 and X470 chipsets, which are the high-end chipsets. Once again, two generations out for that one, but once again, the differences are very minor between the two. So for all intents and purposes for this video, for the two generations of B350 and X370, we're going to be, ref we're going to be grouping them together because they, ha they are aiming for the same general public. And before we get to the details on any chipset, you'll see that by the end of this, 75% of you out there or more will probably be best suited buying a B350 or B450 motherboard because that's the way AMD's product stack is made. Most of you out there will have everything you need out of that chipset. So A320 is the simplest chipset and the one that we're going to go over quickest because honestly it was mainly made only for pre-built PCs or really desktop workstations. Reason why is because you're missing out on most of the key features that people will be looking for in a gaming PC, which means the ability to overclock memory and the ability to overclock CPUs. At the same time, you'll have generally fewer PCIe lanes and you'll also have fewer USB connections on your motherboards. And the reason why most gaming PCs out there is that ultimately between A320 and B350 motherboards, you will have a very minor price difference. You're looking at 10 or $20, which is important for you know a big company making pre-built PCs, but for someone building one gaming PC, uh, you're better off investing right away in a B350 or B450 motherboard. So let's go right away on into the elephant in the room, the B350 and B450 motherboard. The reason why most of you out there, and this is a perfect example of a B350 motherboard, will be gravitating towards this board is that you're going to be getting most of the features you're looking for in a gaming PC. You have the ability to overclock starting on B350. You also have generally uh, a, f a few more PCIe lanes, meaning that if you want to have an M.2 slot, most motherboards will have one on there. You'll have no problem, you know, including many storage sources because you'll generally have more options for connecting them. You'll also have more USB connections generally on these motherboards. And ultimately, the only thing you're really losing out on between going to X370 and X470 is basically the ability to add multiple GPUs. And for most of you out there, you're not going to be going into SLI, meaning that B350 and B450, you're not going to be losing out on anything as long as you get a board with a decent VRM to make sure that you can overclock the CPU that you're aiming for. But that's a little more precise than I want to go into this video. And that'll be more, you know, you can check out the reviews for the individual motherboards on different channels to figure out once you know which chipset you're going for, which is probably the best motherboard for the exact CPU you've chosen in the end, if it can handle the overclocking or not. So as we said, we just went through the product stack on, stack on motherboards. Very simple, A320, most of you out there can forget. Most of you will be in B350 and B450. And if you're aiming for eventually one day maybe having multi-GPU setup, well then it might be worth it in your case to really go get right away an X370 or X470 motherboard. But most of you will be gravitating towards B350, B450. Now on to AMD processors. processors. AMD processors have been segmented in two different ways. First, 
you have AMD APUs versus AMD CPUs. The difference is very simple. The APUs have integrated graphics onto the processors. What that means is technically, if you have all the other components in the system, an AMD APU will be able to run your computer without having a graphics card. While an AMD CPU, you absolutely need a graphics card for your computer to work and generate any type of graphics. Now, to be honest, the APUs from AMD are probably the best APUs ever available on the market. But at the same time, they'll never compete with a discrete GPU, with a decent discrete GPU. So it's important to note that it is a very low entry level budget option. But at the same time, if you're looking for real gaming, you're going to most want to go with a discrete GPU. That doesn't mean the APUs can't be used with graphics cards. It just means that they were principally made for the reason of someone who wants an entry level budget option and doesn't necessarily have to buy a graphics card. Now the APUs, there are three models out there right now. You have the AMD 200GE, which is a two core four tread, really entry level processor. And it is the only AMD processor that is locked. Meaning this is the only processor you cannot overclock in all of AMD's product stack that we're gonna be looking at today. After that, you have two other APUs, which is the Ryzen 3 2200G and the Ryzen 5 2400G. The difference between those two chips are basically more graphics processing units, so better integrated graphics on the Ryzen 5 unit than on the Ryzen 3 unit. And on the Ryzen 3 unit, you only have four cores and four threads, while on the Ryzen 5 units, you have four cores and eight threads, meaning that you're getting basically almost double the processing power or multitasking ability. Now, we're gonna look into the other way AMD has segmented, segmented their products, which is Ryzen 3 versus 5 versus 7, and we'll go from there. Now we're gonna, now we're gonna, the second way AMD has segmented their products into Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, which I don't have an example on the table, and Ryzen 7. Basically, they've separated into three categories. And once again, like for motherboards, I would say that most of you out there will probably end up in the Ryzen 5 category. However, we're gonna go quickly over each product and get a general idea of what type of customer AMD was aiming for in each different level of their product stack. And even though we're talking now about the CPUs, don't forget that the APUs have the same core counts generally as their CPU counterparts, meaning that money for value, if your APUs, you have a better deal on it, you could buy an APU, for example, the 2200G instead of a Ryzen 3 1200, and you'll have the approximate same processing power out of it. But let's look at what AMD was aiming for generally. So for Ryzen 3, you have generally the Ryzen 3 1200 or 1300X. Both processors have four cores and four threads. The Ryzen 3 1300X simply overclocks generally a little better than the 1200. What's important to note is these are entry-level gaming processors or processors aimed at slight multitasking. So most customers that will be buying this, it's either because you'll be doing some very light gaming or no gaming at all, but you just want a well-rounded desktop computer. After that, we move on, as I said, to Ryzen 5. Now, Ryzen 5 is the vastest product stack that AMD is offering, and it's also the only stack that doesn't have the exact same core count on each of their parts. So it's important to note that question of price for quality, most people will say that the Ryzen 5 1600 or 2600 is your best bet at price for performance because they're offering six cores and six threads. They're cheaper than their X counterparts, which is the 1600X and 2600X. And the, the overclocking difference ultimately between the X parts and the non X parts is very, very minute. On the other end, you have the Ryzen 5 1400 and 2400 and 2400G uh, and also 2400 which is four cores and eight threads. You're getting basically a you know two less cores, four less threads and the price difference is actually not that great meaning that most people will be directing themselves towards the right as I said earlier the Ryzen 5 six core 12 thread parts. 
But ultimately, these processors are really aimed at the vast majority of gamers out there. Because with six cores and six threads, or even four cores and eight threads, most games out there won't be using more than that. You'll be easily able to do general multitasking, maybe you know have some Chrome browsers open while you're gaming. Uh, you can even do some light streaming on these processors. So most of you out there will be very satisfied with the Ryzen 5 product line, whether it's the entry level or the high level processors. And lastly, on AMD's high end, we have the Ryzen 7 product stack. Now these processors come with eight cores and 16 threads. There are two generations out as well. You either have the Ryzen 1700, 1700X or 1800X. The only difference between the X parts is that generally, as you go to the higher Xs, 1700X, 1800X, they are supposed to overclock much better than the entry level 1700. And after that, you have the 2700 and the 2700X. Once again, second generation generally overclocks a little better than the first, but ultimately you're getting the same, co the same core and same thread count on all the parts. And most people won't notice that much of a difference between a 1700 and an 1800X or a 2700 and a 2700X. Now these are really aimed at either heavy multitaskers or really high-end gamers, but at the same time, I'll be honest with you, unless you're streaming or multitasking, the extra cores and extra threads in most games won't even be used and you actually might get better performance out of a Ryzen 5 1600 if you are only gaming without doing any multitasking at the same time. Ryzen 5 will sometimes even beat out the Ryzen 7s in some games in some performance metrics. So that's why I'm saying that most of you out there will be going for Ryzen 5, but Ryzen 7 is really aimed, like I said, at streamers or heavy multitaskers. And by streamers, I mean streamers that don't have a second PC for the encoding. So I hope this helped you guys clarify where AMD was aiming with all their products and all their processors. I hope all of you out there that were looking at building a new PC by the end of this video have a general idea now of which which exact chipset and which exact product stack of processors they should be looking at. If you guys have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. As usual, your likes and your subscriptions are really important for us hitting that one that important 1,000 subscribers. So if you did like the content, want to see more, please drop a like, please drop a subscribe. And I hope you, as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video.